Hi and welcome to the Azam Shop channel on YouTube. I'm your host Muhammad Azam and in this particular screencast we are going to take a look at how you can utilize a custom uh, checkbox control inside a UI table view control. All right, We will be doing all the future tutorials in the Swift language so get ready for that also. Um, so we're going to start with the very basics. We don't really have anything on the screen right now. I'm just going to delete this guy and add a UI table view controller. Here we go. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and make this the story, the entry point for the storyboard. All right. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and also add a uh, navigation controller to it. So I'm just going to go to editor and add a navigation controller. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run it. And here we go. So this is our basic setup. It's a UI table view control with a navigation controller and it doesn't really have anything in it. So we're going to add a text box and everything to it. All right. I mean a checkbox. Before I do that, uh, let's go ahead and add the title to this guy. Uh, let's just call it customers. So this will hold a customer's data. All right. Now the reason that we are actually adding a checkbox to a UI table view cell and not using the built-in checkbox control is that we might want to style of style differently. We might want to put the checkbox on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. We want to give it a different unique look. Okay, and these are the, all the reasons that you might go with this approach with adding a custom checkbox control inside a UI table view cell which is part of the UI table view control. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a customer class uh, because we are dealing with customer data. So let's go ahead and add that class into it. And you will notice that the customer class is pretty simple. It's, uh, it's just have two properties, name and is selected. All right. Now let's go ahead and zoom into this cell. And here's the cell. Uh, I'm just going to change the size of the cell to let's say 80 so have we will have a little bit of area to create our cell create uh, our checkbox and then I'm just going to grab a UI view onto the screen so here's the UI view and here we go and just to visually uh, see it on the screen I'm just going to change the color to green so I can actually see what I'm doing so this control this UI view control uh, this will serve as our uh, checkbox control, all right? And I think we're going to go with, I'm just going to set the size to 30 by 30. So here we go, 30 into 30. So this will be our checkbox control, all right? And the next thing you can actually drag is a label control. So here we go. We can just drag it over here and make sure that it has all the good constraints available to it. Go ahead and build this. Now we, we have this table view controller, but we don't have any class associated with it. So let's go ahead and add a new class for the table view controller that we can utilize. I'm just going to say it customers table view controller, and it will be a customers, uh, it will be a subclass of UI table view controller. Just going to add that to the project. Here we go. Go back to the storyboard, uh, select the view controller and change the class of course to a customer's table view controller. All right. The next thing also you will need to do is you need to add a cell. So I'm just going to say over here, uh, let's call it customer table view cell. And this will be part or subclass of UI table view cell. All right. Move it up over here. Go to storyboard. Select the cell uh, document outline. Uh, actually, over here on the custom class, instead of UI table view cell, we can say customer cell. Uh, you can change or select the class name and put that also as the reuse identifier. All right. So now let's go ahead and go to the uh, custom customer table view cell. And you can see it's pretty blank right now. It doesn't really have anything. So let's go ahead and add a label to it. Actually, first, 
let's go ahead and add a checkbox control. All right. So let's go ahead and add a new. And we will just say checkbox view. And this is UI view, subclass of UI view. So this checkbox view will be our custom control uh, that will be responsible for creating the checkbox. Okay. So what does it need to have? It, it needs to have a property called is checked. Okay. It needs to have a checkbox image view because we will be changing the image of the tech checkbox, right? And this will be a UI image view. What's going on over here? Let's see. All right. We have to initialize all these things, of course. Um, we have a couple of other things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it, copy one of these methods so that we can, uh, because there's a lot of code, so I don't want to type all of that stuff. We have a closure over here, which is a checkbox chain. So whenever you select the checkbox, it's going to be fired. And a setup method, which uh, adds the uh, kind of look and feel to the checkbox and also the uh, gesture recognizers. All right. Let me go ahead and add some of these other functions over here also. Uh, pretty simple stuff. All we're doing is that once we uh, once you check the checkbox, we just change the image to small check, all right? And uh, we don't really have these images, so I'm just gonna copy it, let's say over here. There we go, small checkbox. And of course, the 2x companion to it. Here we go. Let's go ahead and build this so that everything is cool. Um, now let's go back to the UI. So let's actually go through this, okay? So it creates a layer. Okay, it creates a border width of 1.0. Uh, the checkbox control will have the user interaction enabled, and uh, it just creates a selector and attach the tap gesture recognizer. So once once you tap it, uh, basically it's going to call this method, which will be consumed by our UI table view cell, which I'll show you. Now let's go back to the main storyboard. I'm going to select this UI view that we created, and instead of having the UI view over here. We are going to have a checkbox view. That's very good, right? All right, so let's go back to our uh, this guy, which is a customer table view cell. And you will notice that it's pretty much black, nothing out there. Well, we have to add two properties to it or outlets. One is the label and one is the checkbox view, the, the control that we just created. And then uh, we can highlight this. All right, here we go. And the name, okay, so here we go. I think the name is over here. And the checkbox, which is I think this one, is this guy. All right, go ahead and build this. I'm gonna go to customer's table view controller and try to see if I can return few rows. All right, and instead of this guy, what we are going to do is we're going to use a customer table view cell. That's the identifier that we use, right? And let's go ahead and run it and see if it actually displays. Here we go. So it does display. But once I click over here, it doesn't do anything. All right, so that's not good. So we need to fix that, right? All right. So the rest of the code we will do in the uh, the configure we create a con we'll create a configure method into our customer table view cell, which will configure the the checkbox. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, let me copy it. This is actually the, the the most important method. Let's go ahead and build this, and let's go ahead and run it. Let's see if it works. Oops, not really working. That's not good. Okay, so let's go over here. Um, we have to find, let me actually check. I think you have to fire the configure method, of course, right? All right, so, and of course you have to set it up. So, the customer view cell has no idea about which of the items are actually checked and which of the items are not checked. It 
have no idea, no clue at all. All right. Uh, what does have a clue is the collection that we didn't made. So let's go ahead and make that collection to hold the customers, right? So I'm just going to say let customers and NS mutable array. All right. So we've just created that. Um, let's go ahead and fire the setup method. What's going on over here? Um, not sure why it's, oh, sorry, should be equal to sign over here instead of that. Okay, so I, as I was saying that the customer view, the cell, the customer table view cell will have no idea of which cell. It's not its responsibility to keep track of which cell is actually clicked and which cell is not clicked. It is the responsibility of the model and that's why we have a a property called is selected over here, right? That will make sure that it is selected. Let's go ahead and run this. It's okay. All right. So now we can go actually into our cell for this one. Let and now we can get the the cell that we need. Customers uh, index path uh, dot row as customer, and then we can call cell dot configure and pass in the customer. All right. So now let's go ahead and run it. And here we go. You got the checkbox working. Pretty cool, right? Of course, you don't really need the green color uh, unless you like it. I mean, you can go over here and uh, if I can select that, you can go over here and remove the green color. There we go. And now the border that we created, the border width, that will come in handy because it will create a border. Here we go. So now you can actually select it and everything looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and check out the uh, the customer table view uh, cell method. And this is the configure method. So if the customer is selected and this is the actual model is checking for, if it is selected, then it will be marked as checked. Else it will be marked as unchecked. Uh, whenever you select an, un whenever you check or uncheck the text box, I mean the check box, then a uh, closure event actually is fired, an event is triggered, and it checks over here that if the customer is not selected, then it is marked as checked and then it is selected true. That's the model property is being said. Else, if the customer is selected, that ma then mark it as unchecked and uh, the customer selected is false. The reason that we added the initial code over here is to make sure that when we are using the DQ reusable with identifier, reusable cell with identifier, we don't get the duplicate rows. All right. And to better understand that, uh, let me actually see if this is 80. This is 80. I don't know why it appears very small, but let me go ahead and if you want to check that out. Um, how do I table view number of rows? Okay. So let's go ahead and return the number of rows as, uh, I don't know, 25 or something. Okay. And if I go and uncheck this code, if I go and uncheck this code and go ahead and run it, then you will notice a big problem. So I'm going to check this one and this one and this one. And I see what happened. It, uh, first of all, it crashed for some reason. But the second thing was that it's, you can see the different items being checked over here also, which is because it's using the same rows, right? The DQ rows. So now if you uncheck this, it's going to make sure that all of those things are, uh, they are maintaining the correct state. Okay. So now is actually everything is okay. All right. It crashed. I mean, I think I might be going a little bit over uh, because, uh, because I don't have that many items. So that's not a big deal, right? So that's pretty much it. I hope you like this tutorial and I hope that it comes in handy uh, because a lot of times you have these check boxes. Uh, you don't want to use the built-in support for the check boxes because they look different. Uh, this, will, this technique will actually allow you to create the check boxes uh, using your custom UI table view cell, which is of course very handy. And uh, you can actually have any look and feel that you want. All right. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. And I hope you like this screencast. Thank you.